Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. Before I get into part two of yesterday's video, I need you to go ahead and do the three things. Hit the like, the subscribe, and turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week without fail. Now, last night I unboxed this big, huge printer, and tonight is the night that I am going to convert it for sublimation. Now, this is a huge printer. I went through all the specs with you last night. If you missed that, go back and watch it so you can make sure you have enough space to get yours set up. Because tonight, I am going to go ahead and get it converted, and I will show you what my first print looks like. And I have the perfect picture already in mind. My family and I took our um, holiday, our winter pictures, our family pictures uh, just this past weekend, and they came out beautifully. And I will probably use one of those to share with you tonight. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, in order to get started with converting your Epson Workforce 7820, you will need a few things. Of course, you will need sublimation ink because the ink that comes with the printer is not capable of um, being used for sublimation. You know, if you've been with me for any length of time, that this is the type of ink that I prefer. I've only tried this brand, which is the Hippo brand, and I love it. So I purchased this a while back and I never used it. And so tonight is the night for this too. Um, and you can't just use, now I have two different boxes of um, Hippo ink. The other box that I used didn't have these syringes because you're going to need these. So I have to have the syringes. I'm going to need gloves and I'm going to need the sublimation ink. So in this box, this box of sublimation ink is different from the box that I used previously. Now, when I opened that box of my Epson Workforce 7820, it came with these four ink cartridges. But just like if you're converting any printer, you're not going to use the ink that comes with the printer. You have to change it out. So these are the four cartridges that came with it. I had to order these four cartridges from eBay in order to make sure that I'm using the same size cartridge so that when I get ready to put these replacement cartridges in, they're the right ones, they're the right size, and it's all going to work out. Now, I, at first I started, I got started with the process off camera just to see if I could, you know, work it out and there wouldn't be any glitches and then I felt like that wouldn't be fair. So I stopped and I haven't filled any of them with ink. The only thing I've done to this first cartridge, which is my yellow cartridge, is I've taken the, um, what is it called? I don't wanna call it the wrong thing. I have taken the chip from the original cartridge and I put it on this one, but I will show you the full process so that you can get this um, done the same way that I'm doing it, okay? So the first thing that I'll do is remove all of the cartridges. After I remove each cartridge, then I will start to fill the each cartridge with ink. So with the first one, the yellow one, and you wanna make sure you use the same tab with the replacement tab. So with the yellow cartridge, I took the, um, I always, I keep calling it, oh, I took the chip off, I use my X-Acto knife. Let me get my X-Acto knife. And it's not an X-Acto knife. I use my Cricut True Control knife. I use my knife. I remove the cartridge from here and I put it on this one. Now I'm going to have my uh, camera girl zoom in a little bit so I can show you what that looks like as I get started with the next one. But before I do that, now that I'm finished with this one, I'm not going to discard it. I still have my old ink from the first printer. I'm not going to throw this away. It's not trash. I'm just going to put it to the side. Okay. So I'm finished with the yellow. I'm going to move on to the next one. I'll move on to magenta. So I have my magenta replacement cartridge and I have my magenta original cartridge that came in the box. I'm going to have her zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. So the next one that I'll do is the magenta and I will open this package. This is the original cartridge that came with the printer. OK, 
Okay, I'm not going to remove this. I am going to remove the chip. So I don't know if you can see this or not, but there is a, I don't know what this is called, but there's this is what's holding the chip in place right here. I'm just going to use the tip of my knife, my Cricut True Control knife, to snap that off. And I would definitely say be careful right here. Okay, you don't want to damage the chip. And then just use your knife to get under there and snap it off, okay? So with the chip, there are five of the little um, contacts at the bottom and four at the top. And so when I get ready to put this chip on this cartridge, I'm going to make sure that the five at the bottom stay at the bottom. All right, so this comes off and for if you're old and you have old eyes like me, and hopefully you can see this, there are grooves on the side. There's one, two, three, four. And these, because these are not the chips, the Epson chips that come with the cartridge, these are replacement chips, they're not going to line up exactly right. So if I try to put this on here, it's not going to line up. So what I have to do is remove this. So I'm just gonna use my, my knife blade and then smooth that out. Okay. And I'm just use the, this one that's on the top, this, this little groove that's right here on the top. Keep that. Keep that groove. Hopefully you can see that. Do not take that one off. Make sure your five contacts are at the bottom, four are at the top. Snap it in place. Okay, it should lay on there flat. If it doesn't, let me take this off because I want to make sure that it's going to lay on there flat. It should fit in there nicely. Okay. It's not going to be an exact fit because these are not Epson cartridges. Once again, I am going to smooth this out a little bit too. The goal is to have it smoothed out. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. All right, now that I have this on, hopefully you can see that really good. I'm just going to snap that back in place. So you're listening for that click. Okay, so I'm finished with the magenta and the yellow. All right, so the next one I'll do is the I think it's called cayenne. Is it called? I might have said that. <laughs> I might have said that wrong. I could, let's just call it blue. How about that? We gotta just call it blue because I called it. I'm not gonna say that again. I'm not gonna let you hear me say that again. C N C Y A N. C Y A N. Okay. Okay. So once again, I'm going to pop this off. Okay, just use your knife. If you don't have a knife, if you just have a little blade or anything that's going to get under there. Look at that. All right. It's called Cyan. C-Y-A-N. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. Okay, so I'm going to put my little cartridge right there. Not use the black. Use the cyan all right and i'm going to pop this off kind of just slide it down and it comes off all right and then smooth smooth out the grooves a little bit and you don't have to do all of them 
just maybe if you do the one to one side, maybe on the left, and then there's one right here. The goal is to just get the cartridge to lay flat. The Not the cartridge, the chip. Now, before I started doing this, before I um, started putting these chips on, the printer does come with um, a CD to download the driver, the printer driver, but I didn't use the CD. I went to the website because I felt like the website would have the most up-to-date information, and I don't know how old the CD is. So I downloaded the drivers from the Epson website. So if you're going to follow my process, I suggest going to the website and not using the CD. Or if you feel more comfortable using the CD, use the CD. Do what works for you. I'm going to shave a little more off right here because it was not laying flat. get it as straight as possible and as flat as possible and then snap it back on. All right, so I have done the yellow, move it to the side. I have done the cyan, move it to the side. And I've done the magenta, move it to the side. So now that means I have one left and that is the black one. Just open it. And move my little trash to the side. Black, black, they should be the same. Okay, so I will use my little knife and, oh, be careful, don't do, look, y'all don't be like me. Don't cut yourself, even though I didn't cut myself. I almost did. Okay, pop it off. Get under there. Okay. Five. Let me make sure I did the five on the bottom. I have to double check myself. Now this one doesn't look like it's laying flat enough. Hopefully it is. We will know. We will know. Okay. Okay, it's on there flat. Now, what I'll do is I'll start with the yellow again, because I started with the yellow before. These, this is my fill hole, and this is my air hole. Once I take the um, sublimation ink and fill it with, fill the syringe, I'm gonna fill it in here, and I'll close it up with this. And this stays open, the air holes will stay open, the fill holes will be closed. Okay, so I'm gonna put on my gloves. This box actually came with gloves, which I'm thankful for because I was actually looking for a pair of gloves. I'm gonna open my ink. So it comes with these syringes and it comes with these needles. The purpose of the needles is so you don't get all that air in here. You don't want the air bubbles in your cartridge. 
Okay, so I am going to put the needle on the syringe and I am going to put the needle in. Okay, in order to get the ink out of this bottle, I'm gonna have to tilt the bottle to the side and then slowly pull up on the syringe. So. So I have the yellow ink pulled from the bottle. I'm gonna stick it in the fill hole and just carefully start to push it down until I get it filled up. Okay, so that was one fill. Let me do it again. Okay, so I'm finished with the yellow. I have the fill hole closed in with the yellow indicator and I have the air hole filled in with the clear indicator. Nothing goes here in the middle. I'll put this to the side and I will get ready to do the magenta. I'm finished with the yellow needle, so I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna use that one anymore. I'm using a brand new clear, clean needle. I will lean my bottle to the side and start to pull the ink from there looks bloody. Okay, I will start to fill it. I have all of my ink cartridges ready. This is the cyan. I have the um, cartridge. I have it on there as straight as I can get it. And I have, you know, the ink hole filled. I have the air hole filled and nothing here in the middle. And I've done that for all four colors. And I made sure that the chip is as flat as I can on each of the cartridges. Now I have already installed the printer driver. It's connected, it's directly connected to my desktop computer. Now I will open the top cover. Okay. And let's see what it's asking me. Close the ink cartridge. Oh no, it says install the ink cartridges that came with the printer, close the scanner unit, and the initialization will begin. So I opened it up. I'm gonna open this flap right here, okay? And it tells me, I'm gonna remove this. It tells me, you know, there's one for black, cyan, magenta, and yellow. I will install the yellow first. I'm very nervous, very, very nervous because I hope that I'm doing this right. Heard that you have to hear a, okay. I heard a little snap. Y'all, I hope this works. I hope that you are having your fingers crossed. I'll do the magenta next. Okay, heard a snap. That's good. The snap is good. Cyan, heard a snap. 
I'm feeling hopeful. <laughs> I turned on my heat press just in case this is gonna work out. I heard a snap. Okay, I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna close the top cover. I didn't mean to slam it. All right, and on the front of the screen, let's see if I can show you that. It says, please wait. It says, do not turn the power off until unit initialization is complete. This takes about four minutes. So I'll speed this part up. All right, the initialization is complete. And on my computer screen, it says print test page. So I am going to do that. I'm going to open this back tray and I'm going to open this. And let's see. So this is all touch screen. Select paper size and type for paper source. I'm going to click OK. OK, so then it says paper tray, eight and a half by 11 plain paper or a cassette, eight and a half. I'm going to click, I think I'm going to click that one. Paper size, plain paper. Select the size and type of loaded paper. It is that. That is what it is. I'm going to close it and go to my print, my computer and click print test page and see what happens. Look at that. That is gold. Look at the black. Look at the yellow, look at the magenta, look at the cyan. Ooh! I have my paper, I'm using a sub paper. I'm going to insert it in the back of the printer. Right there. And I have my preset set to premium presentation paper mat. And I am going to click print on my computer. This is the image that I printed. I actually printed two. I printed this one and I also printed this one. Stay tuned for tomorrow when I show you what I'm going to do with these. Let me give you my final thoughts about this printer. Okay, that was a process. I'm glad I got through it. I'm glad that I was able to conquer it. I was very afraid of converting that printer, but I'm glad I did. Um, I do have two images printed out that I will show you what I'm going to do with them in the next tutorial, so stay tuned for that. I used a sub paper, just the regular size that I always use. Some things that you know I learned during this process. When you are filling your bottles, your cartridges with the ink and you're using the syringe is better. The ink will flow better if the bottle is upside down. So when you put the needle in the bottle, turn the bottle all the way, make sure the needle is all the way inserted and turn the bottle upside down so that the ink flows when you're pulling it through the syringe. That's one thing that I didn't learn until I, I was at the, I was almost finished filling the bottle, the cartridges. Number two, I learned that these um, air hole covers, these have to come off. So at first, when I put the cartridges in, nothing was coming out when I was trying to do a test print. And then, you know, I had to go back and look at the directions that came, that came with the replacement cartridge. And it said to keep these if you're not going to use the ink right away. But if you're planning to use the ink right away, take the air hole covers off. So these were not supposed to still be on there. So you saw me put them on when I was filling the ink, but they don't need to stay on. They need to actually come off when you're ready to get started with printing. Um, some other things, and I just kind of made some random notes. Um, I changed the color settings that I typically use with my Epson um, EcoTank 2760, and I'll, I don't mind sharing my settings with you. I'm still learning, because I, and I don't know what these will look like when the heat, 
when I get them under the, under the heat press. Um, I don't like that I can't see the ink levels. So in the Epson Ecotank 2760, I can see the ink levels and I know how much black and how much yellow and, and how much magenta and how much cyan I have left. And this one, it's not readily available. I have to kind of like turn on the screen and check the ink levels. I don't really like that. I, but I do like the fact that this display is touch screen. I like the fact that it's big. It just seems a lot slower to me. I don't think I'll be using this one very much unless I'm going to be printing something big, you know, and I'll take advantage of the 13 by 19 size. All right, at any rate, hopefully you're able to follow this process. Um, hopefully this is helpful to you. Hopefully I got in close enough to the images so you can see what you need to do to the cartridges to get them ready, you know, to fill them up. Remember the cartridges are a one-time thing. So once this ink runs out of these cartridges, I'll have to buy more cartridges and I'll have to buy another set of ink um, to fill them. Well, not another set of ink, but another cartridge to fill them again. Um, and I think that's about it. Please leave any comments or questions in the um, be down below and I will be sure to answer your questions to the best of my ability. Uh, make sure you have all the supplies you need. I will put links to everything that I purchased except the cartridges because you can get them from anywhere. You just have to get the cartridges that match the size of the cartridges for the printer that you purchase. okay? I don't have a link for that because I purchased those cartridges from eBay. Um, and that is just about it. Um, when you're ordering your Hippo Sublimation ink, make sure you get the ones, the box that has the um, syringes and the needles and the gloves, okay? Because you want to need all of that in order to get this, get your printer converted. I think that's about everything, you guys. If you haven't already, do the three things. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. And I want you to see what I'm going to do with these pictures because I want to see if this color really pops, if it's better than the 2760 or if it's just, or if it's equal. All right, at any rate, thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.